وأقول في القرآن ما جاءت به آياته فهو الكريم المنزل وأقول قال الله جل جلاله والمصطفى الهادي ولا أتأول الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد We're now going to go into أسباب دنوب الهمة Reasons that cause low aspiration There are many factors that cause low aspiration. تحول بين الفرد أو الجماعة وبين الترقي في مراتب الكمال ومدارج الفضيلة. And it varies between individuals and society, communities, congregations, groups. And the level in which this reason impacts, and the impact that this reason may have on high aspiration, they vary. Some of them have a very strong impact on having high aspiration, some of these reasons. And some of them don't have that big of an impact on uh, a person's high aspiration, but it still affects your high aspiration. So the reasons are a lot. There are 30 reasons. I don't know if I'll be able to go through all 30 of them. And the truth of the matter is أن هناك تداخلا بين أسباب دنو الهمة ومظاهره Also, there is a, a, a strong relationship between high aspiration and the uh, ways and forms in which low aspiration manifests that we spoke about previously. يعني the مظاهر دنو الهمة ways in which low aspiration manifests some of them are found in the asbabi dunu al hima reasons for low aspirations. You might find it, find it in there. Like for example, qillatul haya, having very little shyness. That is a madhar min madahiru dunu al hima. It's a way and a form in which low aspiration manifests. And it's also asbabi dunu al hima, a reason for low aspiration. So there's going to be tadakhul. And because of the uh, uh, series being quite long now, I'm going to try to be idni lail kareem cut down on uh, the ones that there are similarities between the asbabi dunur himma and the madahiru dunur himma. I will only mention that which is only the asbabi dunur himma, that which time allows be idni lail kareem. Let's start with the first be idni lail kareem. Uh, first sabab, first reason min asbabi dunur himma for uh, low aspiration and that is Rabi'atul Insan the person's nature there are some people man jubila ala dunul himma they are naturally people who have low aspiration naturally that's the way they are and they prefer al ikhlad ila al ard they prefer to be stuck on the earth they 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 prefer not to raise up into this earth or they become something or they earn something and accomplish something. They don't like, they don't, that's not them. They love al-ikhladi ila al-ard wal-mayli ila al-rahati wa da And they naturally like relaxation, comfort. They love it. Wal-kalafi bi sagairi wa muhaqqirati al-umur. And they like the little things and the dismissed and insignificant things they love those things those are the type of things that you would find them you know going around and and, and trying to achieve those people they won't strive and exert the effort in completing themselves and they don't and those type of people they won't come with the reasons that we're going to mention inshallah ta'ala in this series that will help them and aid them in, be, uh, in being able to come with high aspiration. If they understand these, these reasons that being low aspiration, they will understand the opposite. 
They don't try to come with those reasons. فَيَعِيشُ This person lives a life of فَيَعِيشُ الْمَرْءُ أَمَا فَيَعِيشُ الْعُمُرَ كُلَّهُ وَهُوا قَابِعٌ فِي مَكَانِهِ The person will live their entire life in one place, still, in that routine. لا يتقدم للأمام خطوة The person will not take any step forward. ولا يرقى في سلب المجد درجة and the person will not climb up to the levels of honor and virtue. But rubbama, rather sometimes what might happen is نزل للحضيض دركة بعد دركة Rather what might even happen sometimes is that the person he goes actually backwards and he drives in reverse. There are people whose nature is like that. And that is one of the greatest factors that brings about low aspiration. It is one of the greatest reasons for low aspiration. Tabi'atul insan. Even when you talk to those type of people and you have a conversation with them and a dialogue with them and you speak to them heart to heart, you'll always find them choosing al-ikhladi ila al-ard. They are choosing to stick on this earth. They are choosing the insignificant things. Muhakkarat al-umur. When they know and they have the ability to go forward. The second reason that brings about low aspiration or even can bring out the opposite, which is high aspiration, is tarbiyatul manziliya. The way that the nurturing at home takes place. فَالتَّرْبِيَةُ الْمَنْزِلِيَّةِ لَهَا دَوْرٌ عَظِيمٌ فِي تَوْجِيهِ الْأَوْلَادِ سَلْبًا أَوْ إِجَابًا The, ha- the tarbiyah at home has a great effect on the child, whether he goes in the right direction or in the wrong direction. The house is what? الْمَدْرَسَةُ الْأُولَى لِلْوَلَدِ فَالْبَيْتُ هُوَ الْمَدْرَسَةُ الْأُولَى لِلْأَوْلَادِ The first school that we all went to was home. In essence, all of us were homeschooled. The child that you have, or the, the, or the child you're going to have, you need to understand that the first place they learn what is right from what is wrong is home. And if what you teach him is right, then blessed is that child going to be. And if not, you have now directed the new generation to the wrong direction. Well, that is as some of the great scholars of Islam used to say that the tarbiyah of the child is not just the rights that the child has on the parents, but it's the rights that the community and the society have on that parent, that they nurture their children correctly. The society's right on you is that you cultivate and you nurture your child correctly. Why? Because this child is going to be released into the society. So if he contributes good, the community will benefit from it. And if he becomes a harm and a problem to the society, he steals from the society, he robs the society, kills the society, members of the society or the community. That is something or rights that the community have on you. That your child that you're nurturing, you need to remember, it's not just the right that the child has on you. It's the rights that the people around you have on you. The child, before he goes to school, before he meets the people around, in, the people out there, before he meets the mujtama, the community, before he meets them, you as a parent have to at home nurture that child properly. Low aspiration or high aspiration comes from the child or the parent nurturing that into the child and drilling that into the child, lifting the child's aspiration, educating him, cultivating and nurturing him. I've said this before and I, and I will say it again, inshallah ta'ala. Your child, divide his life into three. If you want to succeed, Divide your child's life into three. The first one is you write down the word body, the physical body. The second one is the mind. And the third one is 
the spirit. These three are the three that you need to nurture every single day for the child. Many people's understanding of tarbiyatul awlad, they understood it as just physically the body you nurture. That's it. My child's body, look at him. Mashallah, barik, you've gained weight. Uh, even when you see a child's born and the parent gives birth to the child, the doctor says to the parent, when the child is five weeks old, for example, bring the child to the hospital. We need to weigh him to see if he's gaining weight. And the parent from that moment is focused on the physical side of the child. So if the child's losing weight, the parent becomes worried. They take the child to the hospital and they should do without a doubt that is important. But that's all they understood from the concept of tarbiya, the physical side. And that is a deficiency to just think that the tarbiya only is the body. What about the other two, which is the mind? The child's mind needs nurturing. Parents should sit down with their children and have conversations and dialogues with their children. That plays a big role in the child's aspiration in life and what he wants to become and how he wants to live his life. Mind, nurturing the child's mind. There are many ways to do that, inshallah ta'ala. Uh, you could listen to, inshallah ta'ala, the series that was done by uh, Sheikh Muhammad Tim Humble on the Muslim family. He has spoken about all of those in great details. And the third, the third um, thing that the parent needs to focus on is the spiritual side of the child. The child's spirit. The child's spiritual here means his deen. His thaqafa islamiyya, his religious uh, ethics. This is where the child learns the Quran. He memorized the ahadiths. The child is also taught about how to go to the toilet and do his call of nature. Yani, if you go to many of the madaris uh, where the Quran is taught and you look at the children who are learning the Quran, you see a child who's half or he's halfway in the Quran or he's memorized a lot. And you see the child urinating, standing up, or he doesn't clean himself when he, you know, he does his urine, he doesn't wash his, wash his private part, or he comes out without washing his hand, or he leaves the door open while he's doing his call of nature, there's no shyness. This all is an, a reflection of the tarbiyah at home. Or the child interrupts elderly people speaking. Or two elderly people are sitting down talking, a child would just walk in between them, not around them, but in between them. Or he will sit down and listen to two people privately speaking. The child puts his head forward and he wants to see or listen to what two people are talking about. From that age, it is upon the parent to spiritually nurture the child. To also nurture the child's mind. Wallahi, you find many people who are physically big, and inshallah ta'ala are going to touch on that soon. They're physically grown physically big if you look at them Allahumma barik their bodies the the physique the way they look is big when you talk to them their minds is like a child's mind what happened what's the problem here the problem here is that there was no relate there were, you see when you re, when you when you nurture the child's body and it goes up then you should also nurture the mind so it goes with it and then you nurture the spiritual side, so it goes with it. So all three of them are balanced. How can you do that if you have a chart in your house? On the fridge, you write down body, mind, soul. I'm about body, mind, spirit, or soul. Those three, and you focus on those three. Every day you tick off something that you've done for your child's physical side. He's done an activity. He the eating that he eats, that he doesn't have junk, he doesn't drink fizzy drinks, he eats healthy. You take that off. It's important. And then you go to the mind. What book has he read today? You know, um, one of the things that I encourage is to get things to do with uh, uh, investigation. And you, you, you tell a story to your child. And when you tell the child the story, you don't finish off the ending of the story. You tell them a story of somebody that did something, they did something, 
a crime was committed. And once you tell them the story of the crime, you say to them, I want each and every one of you to tell me the ending of the story. How does the story end? And I want you to explain it to me. Who committed the crime? Who stole the cookie from the cookie jar? So you mention the story and then you ask them that question after you've, you've placed the whole entire storyline to them. It's, it's, it's nurturing their minds. You want them to think. So then you say, hey, who do you think did it? The child thinks. He contemplates over it. He explains his reasons. And then you discuss his reasons with him. Do you think that reason makes sense? No. Okay, why do you think it doesn't make sense? Hey, the next child, what do you think? The next child, what do you think? This is nurturing the child's mind. That's just an example for you. Just one example. But there are many other ways you can do that. It doesn't just have to be in that particular way. There are many other ways you can do it. Brothers and sisters, you've got a child. Every night before he goes to sleep, he has to read a page of something. Put right next to your child's bed. Qisasul Qur'an, for example, the stories that are mentioned in the Qur'an, Ashabul Kafi, the Qisa of Luqman, wa ma ila dhalik. Or Qisasul Anbiya. Or the stories that were mentioned by the Prophet ﷺ. They have a books. And if your children can read the Arabic language, فَنِعِمَّهِ Allahu Akbar. Very good. So you give them those books, whether it be in English or Arabic, you give it to them and you tell them to read it. A page. And the next morning when they wake up, after they do their dua when they wake up, and they do, do, they do their dua, adhkar al-sabahi wal masa and it's a must. That the child sits down and he does his adhkar al-sabahi wal masa And then you discuss with him the story that you read. How is it like? Um, what did you benefit from it? And after the end of the month, that storybook they finished, you give them a, uh, a gift for finishing the story and you ask questions about it. You ask them questions about it. That's also nurturing the child's mind. Also, the, the deen, how you strengthen the child's religion. These are tarbiyatul manziliya. The child's first school is home. The parents need to understand that, and that's their responsibility. Kama anna walidayhi mas'ulani. Ila, the two parents are responsible for what? Ila haddin kabirin an inhirafihi wa fasadi. Many of the children's destruction and يعني, deviation, it goes back to the parents. Al-Alamat ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah, he said, وَكَمْ مِنْ مَنْ أَشْقَى وَلَدَهُ How many people destroyed their children? وَفَلْدَةَ كَبَدِهِ فِي الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ They forsake their children, their loved ones, their children, their, the, 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 the uh, human being you brought into this world. That is a part of you. You destroyed him. By doing what? Bi'imali, forsaking him. Wa tarki ta'dibi, you didn't discipline the child. Especially those three that I mentioned. You have to make sure that the child's eating healthy. That does affect the child's brain and his thinking process. If your child's not eating, eating healthy, it does affect his deen and his religion. Ay naam, it does. You make sure your child doesn't overeat and he doesn't undereat. You make sure you give your children natural things, things that are mentioned to be good by the Prophet ﷺ, like honey, black seed, oil, yani, you know, things, tamr, date. If you have ajwa dates from Medina, eat good, zamzam water, if you can get them, give it to them. These are things that are beneficial for the child, These, the food that you give them. Don't give them things that are not healthy for the child. Disciplining the child. His mind, his soul. You forsake the child disciplining him. You also forsake the child in helping him how to control his desires. I always say this and I'm inshallah going to repeat it again. The child's life, you divide it into three. The first 10 years of the child's life, it's your responsibility to tell him what to do and what not to do. And the child doesn't have much to say in that situation. He just hears and he obeys what his parents tell him to do. So the first 10 years, the parents are setting the child guidelines. Do this and don't do this. The next, the second 10 years, the parent and the child have partnership. Whereas the parent explains things to the child and he wants to hear what the child has to say. Their discussion goes on and a dialogue. The last, the third 10 years, the third 10 years, 
the parent does not enforce or impose his views onto the child or onto this young adult. He doesn't. He lets him do it and he's a nasih, sincere advisor. He might come up to him and say, I saw this, my advice on you to you in this issue is this, 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 khalas. If you take those steps, you won't start to uh, do what you used to do uh, or you miss doing, sorry. Some people, they miss out. This telling the child what not what. They don't do anything. They forsake their children. They turn a blind eye. When the child reaches 20 or 18, the parent wakes up and realizes, my child's going the wrong direction. And then they start to do what they should have done when the child was nine or uh, eight or seven or six years old. That's, you can't do that. It doesn't work like that anymore. Right now, he's in that age of partnership. You need to tell him why you say, why you want him to do this. So if you've taken those first 10 years well and you've done it correctly, the second 10 years of the child's life, the partnership will seem to work in your advantage as a parent. Your advantage, of course, is what is beneficial for the child. So he will always generally be in line with you because that's how you nurtured him from the beginning. And when he becomes 30, when he becomes 20 plus, He's working in that direction. He's working towards the milestones that you have set for the child. And you will not have then forsaken the child. When he's 15 onwards, desires start to creep in. The child has shahwa now. He's starting to look at the opposite gender. So what do you as a parent do in the situation? You aid the child in the way he needs to control his desires. Ibn Qayyim is saying that. Some people, they, they abandon and they forsake how to tell the child to control his desires. And remember, if you worked hard in the first 10 years, and you also worked hard in the second 10 years, the third 10 years, it will work in your advantage as a parent. Your daughter will be very shy. Your son will also be very shy. And both of them would work in the, in the path that you've set for them. Many parents, he's saying, Ibn al-Qayyim, they claim that they are honoring their children, but they are humiliating their children. And they claim that they are having mercy on their child, but what they're really doing is they are oppressing the child. And then he said, Then the person has really lost benefiting from their child. وَفَوَّتَ um, عَلَيْهِ and made the child lose his portion in this dunya and in the hereafter and also made, did the same to himself. He has made himself lose uh, his dunya and akhirah because of what he's done to his child. This word, I think everyone should memorize it and learn it and always keep it in their minds. Ibn al-Qayyim summarizes the tarbiyatul awlad in one sentence. He said, He said, if you think about the corruption that you see in children, you will find that the majority of them have actually come from the parents. And I'm going to be direct and honest. The overwhelming majority and blame is actually on the father figures. It's actually not the mothers. The overwhelming majority of children who went the wrong direction, you would actually find the effects and the problem have actually come from the father. And the reason why I say that is because Many fathers are deliberately absent from their children and they don't want anything to do with their children. And that plays a role in what the child becomes, good or bad. The, it affects the child. The majority of the children in the situation, in that situation where their father is absent, majority of them, they go in the wrong direction. I remember many years back reading an article on the uh, relationship between uh, prostitution of girls and boys, you know, playing around with girls and committing zina as well, the relationship between those two and the absence of a father. They said that many girls who go towards prostitution are going there because they are looking for love, acceptance, appreciation from the male figure. And the reason for that is because of the absence of her father. Allahu Akbar. It's ajib, right? This clearly shows us that the importance of the father being around. And I remember, subhanAllah, many years back, 
there was an a event that I did in the UK, and the event was to get the ch the youngsters, the youths, uh, so uh, especially in the Somali community, Somalian uh, youths and the Somalian parents. So we did an event where we called on to the Somali parents and the Somali youths, and we sat down to talk to the parents. The parents were told, we, the idea was to tell the parents what the youths in this country and the youngsters are now thinking. And for the children, the youths and the parents to have a conversation and, and talk about where things are going wrong. And it happened in Northwest London. What really hurt me and made me realize deeply the problem in the community is the absence of the father. That day, there was not one father who came and sat down. Imagine that. It was only mothers that were sitting there who were concerned about their children, who were concerned about their, the problem of their kids. And we know what's taking place in the UK. The stabbing and the killing and the murdering and the bloodshed that's taking place. We all know what's happening. We're aware of that. How is it possible that a father does not come to get a solution for his son or a solution for his daughter? It makes no sense. So your child's aspiration in life and what he wants to become, it was, it's made at home. As they say, it's made in the kitchen. It's made in the living room. It's made in that ha four walls of your house. That's where the child becomes one who has high aspiration or one who doesn't have it. That is why your child is choosing low aspiration to imitate and mimic and impersonate rappers, musicians, uh, TV uh, presenters. That's why he's chosen that. And he hasn't lifted his head up to realize these people who are rappers and singers are truly despicable, uh, irrelevant people who have no value other than making money from people by singing filthy things. Your child looks up to that. A Muslim, his name is Muhammad, Ahmed, Khalid, Zaid, Bakr. That's their names. And they're imitating a non-Muslim rapper who has no value other than what he's doing right now. That's all he's loved for or he's liked for by those who like him. But if you look at him as a person, he is a alcoholic, drug addict, and your child is looking up to that type of person. Where did that low aspiration come from? Your name is Muhammad, and you're following a non-Muslim, despicable, uh, filthy individual. Your child is following that. How is that possible? How did my child's low aspiration become that low? The reason for that is the parents. Many parents are nurturing their children upon what? على الجبن والخوف والهلع والفزع فيخوفهم بالغول وبالعفريات ليكفوا عن عبثهم many, many parents, their disciplining of their children is very, very bad. So they place in their children fear, fear mongering. That's what they do to their children. So they place fear in their children's hearts. They, say, they scare them with, with, with stories that they make up. And every community has those stories in the Arabic language, in the Arab Arab world, there's something they call ghul. It's, it's a type of shaitan. Somalis have those type of stories that you scare children with. And the child's scared of the dark. Your child's scared of the ifriyat. You're telling him to be scared of the jinns. And then later, and all of that, why are you doing it? Liyakufu an abathim. You want the child to stop playing around and, 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 and being a child. But really what you've just done right now is you've made your child have a, a characteristics as fear, and scared and terrified in life. You've now made your child scared. Then tomorrow when he grows up, you want to teach him, um, don't fear these things. Fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it doesn't work like that. It doesn't work like that. So what you're doing at the beginning, the, 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 the seed you're planting, remember, it's growing. That seed, that flower, is, that, that plant is growing. And it enters many places. Why do you think your child's scared to go outside? Why is your child at home? He doesn't want to leave. Why is your child not going for interviews and jobs? Because he's scared of being turned down. Why are many children suffering from depression and anxieties? Why? Because the parent has put fear into the child. The parent has put, put into the child 
uh, these qualities. Especially a lot of the parents who are scaring their children with people that they should make their children love, such as the doctor or the teacher or your father. That's the biggest, that's the, that's the one that the mothers do. Your father. So the child, instead of loving his father and appreciating his father, he fears his father. Or he fears the teacher who, who he should have taken as a close friend and benefited from. The doctor who's going to help the child's health. You make him fear the people he should have loved and appreciated and want to be like them. You see what you're doing here? This is the problem. And from there comes what? وَمِنْ هُنَا And from here, يَنْشَأُ What comes from it is الْوَلَدُ The child becomes جَبَانًا رِعْدِيدًا يَفْرُقُ مِنْ ظِلِّهِ He becomes scared, terrified that the child even runs away from his own shadow. And he starts to fear وَيَخَافُ مِمَّا لَا يُخَافُ مِنْهُ He starts to become scared of those you should not be scared of. So many parents, what they do is they nurture their children upon عَلَى الْمُيُوعَةِ وَالْتَرَفِ they nurture their children upon this uh, laziness and uh, you, daddy, how are you? Like kind of, honey, rujula, strong, be strong, stand straight. Don't stand sideways, stand straight. When you talk to me, look at me, don't look around. These qualities, they don't nurture their children. They nurture their children upon al-muyu'ati wal-taraf, wal-badhi, wal-tayshi. Honey, they nurture their children upon these qualities. فَيَنْشَأُ الْوَلَدُ مُتَرَفًا مُنَعَّمًا the child grows up with all of the blessings. Dad, I want this. Okay, here. Dad, I want this. Give me this. He gives it to him. He doesn't ask him. I'll give it. I'll give you what you want, but I need something in return. And what do you want? I need you to do this, this, and I'll give this to you. Why? That's very good. The child will learn that in this world that he lives in, nothing comes free. It's about working for things. It's about achieving and gaining things. Nothing comes for free. Your child will learn that. If you don't do that, you give him everything. When he goes into society, He's expecting everyone to give him what he wants. And if he doesn't get what he wants, because that's what he's used to, he will kick off a fuss. And he will not be able to live with the community and the society. And very important, Wallahi, these things that we do as parents, it affects the child's life later. It affects everything about him. A lot of the parents, they nurture their children on giving the child whatever he asks for and, and doing what the child wants. And the child becomes selfish. The child only becomes concerned about himself. I want. He doesn't care about other people. The child grows up not asking about his Muslim brothers. The child grows up not wanting to know the happiness of other people. He doesn't make him, he wants it for himself. And he wouldn't participate in their, uh, in their good times and their moments. The child becomes like that. It destroys the child's dignity. It kills the child's steadfastness. It takes away from the child's courage and bravery. How many parents do we know who don't nurture their children upon what? High aspirations. But rather what they nurture their children is upon what? كَمَا تُرَبَّى The way that you nurture a, uh, an animal or a pet that they have at home. I say, خلاص. They don't set a high goal for the child. فَلَا هَمَّ لَهُ مِنْ أَوْلَادِ إِلَّا مَطْعَمَهُ مَلْبَسَهُ All the, that he thinks of his child's uh, tarbiya uh, is food. What my child going to drink? What my child going to eat? Uh, that's it. The parent doesn't have any of that in his mind for his child. And from this, what comes out is a child who's what? You are now going to have a child who's dim-witted, a child who has low aspiration, a child who has no morality or dignity. From here, you are now raising your own enemy in your own household. Many people are uh, Some people are opposite to what we mentioned What do they do to their children? Uh, they are very harsh on their children They are very harsh to their children Cruel to their children And They show strictness to their children more than they should do 
فيضربهم ضربا مبرحا you see them hitting the child فيضربهم ضربا مبرحا they hit the child a beating that wounds the child has marks on the child for what لكن عند أدنى خطأ for the most basic things he's beating his child up for it ويبالغ في تعنيفهم and he goes overboard in disciplining the child عند كل صغيرة وكبيرة he does that for everything whether it's small or it's little he will beat his child up for everything that's what you find many ومنهم from the monks the people is من يهزأ بأولاده ولا يرى أنهم أهل لشيء من المكرمات and this is the saddest one you find some parents they are belittling their children when they see their child working hard and achieving something they never ever show their child that they appreciate their child's hard work I remember once upon a time when I was very little um, I felt that I wanted to please my parents and um, there was a digital radio and I wanted to clean it I wanted to make my parents very happy so what I did was I took a bucket of water and I poured it over the radio and it exploded my aim was to take the water to put it on there and then to clean it but what happened the water and electricity and it exploded one of the things that touched me was when my mother found out she scolded me and I told her my reason I, I said mama I wasn't just pouring water into it I wasn't pouring water over it my reason was that I wanted to clean it for you mom so parents need to understand that that the maqsal of the child was very good that you appreciate it you thank the child for it you say don't no problem you did a mistake now you learn electricity and water don't come together but your intentions were very good and I appreciate that if you stop your child from that you tell him off and you rebuke him for that he will never come forward to try something for you he won't show appreciation to your children even if it's something small make it look that you appreciate it that you see it your child comes and draws a, a picture for you appreciate the picture tell them how much it means to you and what they what, what, what they drew to appreciate that all of that is um, if your child tells you he memorized something show them that you love it and you're happy with it this is something important. Um, there are some people they don't have no conversation with their children. They don't want to have any dialogue with their children. Especially if you look at the elderly Somalian parents, they look, they feel degraded if they're told to, 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 to talk to their children. It's a form, they feel degraded. He's a little kid, I don't sit with little kids. That's what he says. But remember, today he's young and you uh, choose not to talk to him. When he becomes big and he becomes older, remember this can affect you as a parent. The way you abandoned him when he was young and you chose not to speak to him, it would pro might most likely affect you when you grow older and you want to just talk to him. And he's like, you're too old for me, I can't talk to you. Remember, كَمَتَدِينُ تُدَانُ your child, conversation, have it with him. Give him that time, laugh with him. Have that heart-to-heart -heart conversation with him. These are qualities that brothers and sisters affect the child's tarbiyah. And when it affects the child's tarbiyah, your child's going to have high aspiration in life. Will work hard and be determined. He will be constituous. He will have resi resilience. He will have forbearance and patience and certainty in what he does. You will have courage and bravery. These are qualities that you will see in your child. You are the first teacher of your children. Think about what you're teaching them. I'm going to stop there, inshallah ta'ala. Anything which I have said that was wrong or incorrect is from me and shaytan. And Allah and his messenger are both free from it. Subhanak Allahumma bihamdi ashadu wa la ilaha illallah. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayhi. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. How can you do a two second action right now that will give you a share of the reward of everything we're doing on this YouTube channel? Simple, like this video and click subscribe. Why? It will allow YouTube to recommend our videos
to other users. And imagine the huge amount of reward that could be waiting for you on the day of judgment if you did that with a sincere intention of spreading the deen of Allah. You'll be rewarded for every single person who benefits from one of our videos as a result of your like or subscribe. That's an easy two second action that you definitely don't want to miss out on. Do it now, click like and subscribe and don't forget to make that intention.